One more time, dear President and dear colleagues, I want to thank for having me here in this great uh, program and Congress. And in the next minutes, we are going to present an interesting case. Uh, this is a 74 years old male with uh, symptoms of uh, dyspnea, NEHA class 3, according NEHA class 3, uh, coronary artery disease, and onset of transient ischemic attack many years ago with uh, no residual neurological symptomatology, all the cardiovascular risk factors, including diabetes mellitus and restricting lung disease. Um, the patient characterized us according to the uh, logistic Euroscore as of high surgical risk. We proceed with uh, assessment of the patient and we revealed the significant aortic valve stenosis with an error of 0.8, mild impaired left ventricular injection fraction and uh, a migraine of 33. The hemodynamic assessment revealed a peak to peak rate in more than 50. We proceed with uh, uh, evaluation of the coronaries, so in no relevant issues. The patient has pattern grafts in the um, RCA and the uh, OM and the diagonal brands, and the autography revealed the calcification at the level of the aortic valve, no horizontal aorta, mild paravalvular leakage, and no dilatation of the ascending aorta. The CT analysis revealed a uh, heavily calcified aortic valve, not only at the level of the annulus, but also there was a volume of calcification protruding into the LVOT and having an Agatha score of approximately 2,000. At the same time, we estimate the high of the coronaries, although the right side was protected, and uh, the, coronar the CT analysis revealed the moderate calcification at the level of the aortic arch and the bovine uh, aortic arch with a common origin of the branchiocephalic tract and the left common carotid arteries. We measure the sinuses. This is an important step during the assessment procedure because uh, here is the place where the native valves are going to land after the implantation of the uh, new valve. And according to the numbers, we decided to proceed with an evolute uh, R valve, 29 millimeter in dimensions, according to the perimeter of the native aortic valve, which was uh, 55 millimeters. The peripherals with, uh, were with no relevant issues. We, they have a sufficient lumen diameter, no relevant angulations, and no uh, circular severe calcification. So the heart team assessment was that uh, we had to deal with a severe aortic valve stenosis, symptomatic with NIHA classification 3. The patient was uh, characterized as high surgical risk. And at the same time, he has characteristics that make this uh, situation as high risk for stroke due to the heavily calcification at the level of the aortic valve, due to the moderate calcification at the level of the aortic arch, and due to the medical history of transient ischemic attack. So we decide to proceed as a heart team with TAVR. We use the transfemoral approach from the right side using the central C60 friends uh, as an access point. We proceed the proce with the processes of Evolutar 29 millimeter, and we use cerebral protection device in order to protect the patient for a, a stroke attack. A few words about the anatomy of this uh, um, sentinel device. It consists of two filters. There is a, a proximal filter and a distal filter. The distal filter is located in the left common carotid artery. The proximal filter is located in the branchiocephalic. In between is this articulating sheath, which is 4.5 centimeter in length and uh, has adjustable girth in order to accommodate into the carina at the level of the aortic arch. We have the front handle, which controls the proximal uh, filter. We have the rear handle, which controls and uh, stabilizes the distal filter. In between them, we have the articulating knob. And here is the um, uh, image of how the, this filter are going to be located or must be located. Must be located, the target zone must be approximately 1.5 to 2 centimeters distal from the ostium. And with that, we can proceed with a video of the case.
So um, we have already uh, prepared the uh, the contralateral side, which was the, at that uh, case the left uh, femoral artery and the left femoral vein, introducing uh, uh, seven friends femoral seats in both artery and vein. And here you see the anatomy of this sentinel uh, uh, device with a distal seat, uh, distal seat here filter, the proximal filter here. Both filters have a pore size of 140 micros. So afterwards, we, uh, through a Lima catheter and quarter sentence, we assess the puncture site, and by using the roadmap technique in that case, we were able to puncture exactly at the point we were uh, uh, wanted to, and that must be above the bifurcation and below the inferior epigastric artery. And then we introduce a pigtail catheter at the, exactly at the level of the aortic arch. You can see the uh, typical bovine anatomy of the arch with the uh, common origin of the branchioencephalic and the left common carotid artery. Thereafter, we uh, deployed two proclides at 10 and 2 o'clock, uh, respectively, under fluoroscopic guidance. And then uh, we insert an eight friends seat at uh, the site of the uh, puncture site. So at the same time, we have already, uh, as you will see here, uh, insert uh, the radial seat, which was a, a six friends radial seat through which we would insert the sentinel device. And here you see the introduction of the sentinel device uh, up to the aortic arms. We first deployed the first filter, then we stabilize it. This is the first step. We have three steps that we have to follow during the, this procedure. We withdraw the, um, uh, the device and then we start rotating and curving the seat in between the two filters in order to orient towards the left common carotid artery. And here you see the procedure. You see the curve of the articulating sheath exactly at the level of the carina. And then we use using a normal PCI uh, wire through which we introduce the uh, centile device into the left common carotid artery, deploying and stabilizing the distal filter approximately two centimeters distal to the ostium, as you can see here. I don't know, Costas, if you want to make any comment uh, during uh, this deployment procedure. And well, then the, the, the only thing I want to make is that and, uh, it, it, may, it may be that the curve is formed a little bit further down, and then the wire shoots up in the carotid. So this particular thing that the, that the, 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 the sentinel device is pointing to the carotid before the wire is operational mostly in bovine arch cases like uh, this one, not, not in all the cases. I want to make clear that part, okay? Because okay. in the uh, other cases, it's uh, is easier to uh, find the, the left carotid from the ascending aorta, so we don't manipulate it in the, in that, in the, in the ostium of the nominate ascension. Yeah, I understand, but that, that's what I'm saying that I just want to make clear that if not uh, whoever is watching that this may be particularly helpful here, but it's not the general uh, uh, way um, that, that this device is used. Okay. And then we introduce the 60 friends uh, seed, hydrophilic seed uh, at the um, right common femoral artery, and then we advance through the, femor the seed from the femoral vein, uh, five friends, a temporal pacemaker into the apex of the uh, right ventricle and we stabilize it. We uh, already start the preparation of the device 
Thereafter, we uh, introduce the pictorial catheter deep into the aortic root. And uh, then, by using an ablet's left catheter, we insert a, a normal a long wire into the left ventricle. We give many attention lately during this procedure in order not to interact with the uh, different uh, structures of the LVOT, the papillary muscles. We insert the big tail. At that time, we uh, usually do uh, simultaneously hemodynamic assessment showing, uh, and then we uh, proceed with a valvuloplasty. Here is a, a Z-made balloon, 18 millimeters, with a good uh, stabilized balloon, maybe mild paravalvular leakage, and thereafter we start the deployment of the Evolutar. 29 millimeters in dimensions. We need the projection so the sinuses be aligned, and then we adjust the projection so to have this market coaxial. The target zone must be uh, three to five millimeter deep into the LVOT, exactly below the node one. And we start the, uh, slowly the deployment. We can deploy the first one third slowly. We don't need always rapid pacing when we use this type of valve. We need also the big tail as a marker. We try to stabilize the valve and to control the tension. And then we start slowly uh, releasing and deploying the valve. You see uh, slowly the flare coming up. Usually we don't need rapid pacing during uh, such procedure. We want to avoid rapid pacing. We know according to data that multiple rapid pacing can affect the mortality. However, in that case, it was important to stabilize, uh, eliminate the uh, movement due to the cardiac output. And because of the deep implantation, we did a partial receipt once here, trying to stabilize and a little bit withdraw the valve at the same time. However, you see again that the deployment is a little bit low, deep into the LVOT. And then we decided one uh, more time to uh, receive the valve because of the deep deployment at time and the paravalvular leakage that we have seen. So one more time, the second time the parcel receive, and one more time, you see that at that time the depth of, uh, of the um, device was much better compared to previous one, must be below 10 millimeter, below the first cell, and then according to this uh, hemodynamic behavior and uh, autography uh, with revealing no severe, no moderate uh, AI, we decided to release the valve. When we do this step, we're trying to release the tension And here is the final deployment. Always after the deployment of the valve, we uh, check the hemodynamic behavior. We check echocardiographically the uh, paravalvular leakage or any other complications that can be occur. And by autography also, we check the existence of uh, paravalvular leakage. So here is the autography coming. showing a mild paravalvular leakage. We always uh, estimate the paravalvular leakage and the aortic regurgitation hemodynamically. As you see here, having a, a sufficient diastasis. And then after that, we uh, start withdrawing the uh, cerebral protection device, uh, doing the opposite steps, trying to avoid uh, any um, strong and force uh, movements 
we have to try to avoid the resistance. And here is what uh, we feel some embolic debris inside the filter. And at the end, as always, we take the uh, axe side. And we see that we didn't have any complication, no perforation, no dissection, no thrombosis, no relevant stenosis. And here is what we face during that procedure. And by that, I want to thank you for your attention. Well, I'm glad to see that uh, you caught some debris in the device. Uh, do you know that which filter that was from? Uh, or That was the Sentinel device. I understand, but which of the two filters or, you know? The the from the proximal filter. filter. Yeah. So it was from the... Uh, yeah, interestingly, they say that most of the debris are directed towards the inaminate. So, um, I mean, that's interesting. But we, 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 pure minor. material. Yeah. Uh, but the proximal had this uh, thrombus, two pieces yeah, thrombus. of thrombus. Appearing. Very distinctive. Yeah. And the white, like uh, amorphous calcium, small, I think. Yeah, it was a tricky, uh, tricky thing, and I, I think also the repositioning uh, itself also, you know, there's some friction there up and down. Yeah. Uh, very difficult to uh, avoid, and obviously at that moment you're really going to get the, you're really going to get the position right. So you got to do whatever you have to do to get the position right. No question about that. And um, the, the interesting thing here is that the, uh, the, it moved down despite the fast pacing the first time. So, and the other interesting point here is that with partial uh, resetting, we were able to move it up on both cases. So right. we yeah. didn't need to have a full reset. And I think that that's useful, and, and I yeah. think that's also a good technique for everyone to notice yeah. that the. The, the device, uh, you need to recapture essentially 75%, and then it sort of comes up a little bit. And, and you know, that, I think that's a good feature. Yeah, you should take advantage of this, because if you do full receive, then you only have two full receive things, and then you have to remove the valve. That, 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 that's correct. That comes from With the aneurysm device yeah. uh, recommendations. The, um, um, the other aspect is that I don't know what the fast is your fast here with a core valve. I, we don't use more than 140 with a core valve. But I think you went a little bit higher here. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously the sapien you go, we go super high. But in the core valve, if, even if we go high, we try to go 100. And if you get breakthrough uh, PVCs, then we go to 120 or 140. And pretty much is off the yeah. the screen there. But do you wanna do you use this super high to drop no, the blood no, pressure? I, or? I think that was no. one one That's about 40. It. 140. Usually 120 to 140. Fast this way pacing. we can keep it a little bit longer. Like here, you know, you go up yes. and down. It's a little difficult when you're resheathing. To, yeah. to, to stop and then start again. I mean, that's the beauty of the partial resheath that yeah. you cannot do yeah. it right away. 